just today, James Myrtle and I dropped a project for where for the second year in a row, um, we did we ranked every blue line from best to worst in the NHL. And, and the method we did was we used a combination of statistics, the eye test, and just our overall knowledge of, of these players and these blue lines. And then from there, we came up with an initial draft of like tiers and then sent them around to as many execs and coaches around uh, the NHL as we could, got some feedback, tweaked it around. And one of the biggest takeaways for me was that there were only a few teams that have a blue line with no holes in it, right? It's like the best blue lines in the NHL because of parity, presumably, seem to have gotten worse. And a lot of the blue lines at the bottom seem to have gotten better. So even though I look at Vancouver's blue line and I don't love it on paper and I think they'll need to add a piece to go into deep playoff run, it's still unanimously profiled as a top 10 blue line in the NHL on, on paper and landed in tier two. I and it's just so. like, and it's just like you go through these, you go through these contenders, right? I'll, I'll give you some examples, right? So the Carolina hurricanes, they lose Brady Shea and, and Brett Pesci. Now there are some question marks, especially now that Brent Burns is 40 years old. How, how, um, how well can he continue to hold up in a top peril next to Slavin? Um, Wait, is he 40? He's 40. I, I believe so. Let me double check. Holy cow. No, I, I'm not saying I disagree. You're, I think you're wrong. He, he turns 40 in March. He's 39 right now. He's 40 He'll in He'll be 40 eyes. by it's the playoffs. It's his age 40 season by the time it's playoffs. So I, I did not know Brent Burns was that old. Anyway, sorry. Continue. I interrupted. And then Edmonton, right? Everybody's on paper uh, consensus uh, uh, favorite cup pick. They, we know the the state of their blue line. They've got Ty Emerson in their top four. Dar- Darnell Nurse is always a question mark. Uh, Dallas, another team that ranked in tier two. Look at the right side of the blue line, right? They got Dumba and Lubushkin in uh, a top four role. Uh, the Avs, who I look at as one of the few teams that have a really, really high end blue line, they still lost Sean Walker compared to um, compared to the blue line that they iced in the playoffs, and compared to the start of last year, they don't have Bowen Byram anymore because of the Casey Middlestat trade. Uh, you look at the Panthers, just won the Stanley Cup. They lost Brandon Montour. Their second pair right now uh, has Nico Mikola and Dmitry Kulikov. Uh, the Rangers made the Eastern Conference Final. Their top four RD spot, second pair playing with Keandre Miller, is a huge question mark because of how dramatically Jacob Truba's play has fallen off a cliff, uh, especially when Fox was a little bit banged up in the playoffs. That blue line had a lot of troubles breaking the puck out. Uh, you look at Winnipeg, another good team. They lost Brendan Dillon, and now they have a second pair with Dylan Sandberg, who's unproven in the top four role, and Neil Pionk, who has struggled defensively at times. I just, when I look around the league, I don't see many teams with blue lines that are clearly high end. I think you're right. And again, when we were kind of, I mean, you obviously did the exercise, but I was thinking about it too. Um, and I mean, we talked about the centers one as well that you and I were texting about, but you know, thinking about where the Canucks rank in terms of the blue line, I think your high end is just so high that you're going to be in that upper echelon. Yeah, it's, it's, yeah. I mean, you have Quinn Hughes and when you have that type of superstar talent, that pair for Vancouver was the most important, even strength play driving engine for them. And there, there are only a few teams that have that type of star power at the top of their lineup. Uh, even another team like Nashville, where the, the the bottom end of their lineup isn't isn't the best, right? They're probably a top four defender short. But when you have Yossi and Shea just like powering the top of, of your blue line, it it goes a really long way. Uh, I would consider Vancouver in a very similar boat as Dallas as well, right? Because Dallas has Haskinen and, and they have Harley and a defensive stopper and, and Essa Lindell. It profiles pretty similarly to Vancouver where you're like, you you love their top three defensemen, but afterwards the depth sort of uh, falls off. I'll also say this. I really believe that Carson Soucy is one of the more underrated second pair defenders in the NHL. Like to me, it's a clear like Hughes, Heronic, and then Soucy is to me very clearly their third best um, defenseman. Yeah. And it just comes down to can you find the right uh, additional player to to round out that uh, that top four? It's like we've been saying since the summer with Tyler Myers. You like him more on a third pair, and for Carson Soucy, look, he obviously is their third best defenseman. Can he stay healthy? That's always the question. It feels like we're asking uh, with Carson Soucy. Let's get to anyone. I'll else. also say this one more thing. Now that I mentioned that, we're talking about Canucks wanting to ideally uh, add to their blue line. Well, given how many contenders have question marks, especially on that right side of the blue line with Dallas and 
uh, Edmonton, with uh, Florida potentially, with the Rangers potentially, there could be a serious bidding war for top four defensemen at the deadline. And, and it makes me wonder what are the price is going to look like. And who's going to come on top? Like, who has the most yeah. to offer? Um, Again, advantages, like we were talking about accruing cap space, that's going to be a feather in the Canucks cap. Um, That's going to help them when it comes down to it. And again, we talked about it yesterday. You brought up a really good point that they don't really have any bad contracts right now that you can make a dollar in, dollar out move. Now, if you're making dollar in, dollar out moves, it's more like, all right, we're giving up a guy like Nils Hoagland or a guy we really like, but... We had to make the money work. Uh, accruing cap space is obviously going to help them. We have an explainer article on what accruing cap space actually means because a lot of people have been asking that uh, over at CanucksArmy.com. So if you want to go read it, we wrote about specifically why that benefits the Canucks and why it's a good thing uh, that they're accruing cap space and accruing even more with Mark Friedman uh, down in the minors.